Hello and welcome to the Killick and Co market update. We've had some very hot weather here in the UK this week, so it feels like a good time to be looking at the increase in severe weather related events that we're seeing around the world. We've been looking at a report by Aon, which is a major global insurance company and severe weather related events is something that they do insure against. The report we're looking at is called the Global Catastrophe Recap. And here are some stats that apparently happened in the first half of 2021. Globally, it was the eighth warmest first half of the year that we've had on record. In Spain, a new minimum temperature was set of minus 35.9 degrees Celsius. And in Canada, a new maximum temperature was set of 49.6 degrees. And in Africa, there was the warmest January and June on record. So upon reading this report, it does become quite apparent that the instances of severe weather related events are definitely on the rise. And furthermore, the economic cost of these events is also on the rise. Here's a chart that we took from the report that shows the cost of severe weather related events in the first half of each of these years. And to give you an example, the polar vortex, which was that really cold spell that happened in the US in February this year, is rumored to have cost around about $22 billion. The really cold weather caused a lot of damage to water infrastructure in particular, because a lot of those pipes froze and burst, and that caused a huge amount of damage. One particular company that has actually benefited from these extreme weather events is Xylem, which is a water technology company. Among other things, it makes pumps and filters that are very useful in times of flood, and it also makes sensor technologies that can help to ascertain where in a pipe a leak has occurred. So here's the share price chart. As you can see, it's done very well over the last five years. Please do give us a call if you'd like to hear more about our thoughts on companies that could potentially benefit from a rise in severe weather related events. Unilever published results this week, which disappointed the market and sent the shares down by over 5% on the day of publication. The main reason was the mention of cost inflation. We've talked about inflation a lot recently, but a lot of companies are having problems with the rise in the prices of their raw ingredients and inputs. And that means they have the choice of either absorbing those higher costs themselves, which will mean their profit margins will shrink, or they could try and pass on those higher costs to their consumers by raising their own prices, but that could mean they end up selling less. You might remember the backlash that Unilever experienced back in 2016 when the company tried to raise the price of Marmite. Generally speaking, the more innovation a company shows and the more unique its products are, the better able it is to pass on higher prices to its consumers without impacting its own sales. Arguably, Unilever has not shown as much innovation in comparison to its peer group over the last couple of years, leading to a somewhat disappointing share price performance, comparatively speaking. On this chart here, we've compared the share prices of Nestle, Procter & Gamble and Unilever over the last five years. And this chart shows their share prices in percentage terms. And you can see that Unilever has performed by far the worst. It's that dark green line at the bottom of this particular chart. Now, as you can see, it hasn't really moved anywhere since 2017. Now, Unilever does have a slightly higher dividend than both Nestle and Procter and & Gamble, but even if you account for that, the share price and the total return have in fact been worse than the other two companies. So please do give us a call if you'd like to hear more about our thoughts on Unilever. And finally, Nationwide has published a report showing how UK non-essential spending has changed between the first and second quarters of this year. And I think it's fair to say that it has risen quite dramatically. Here are some particular areas that have experienced the biggest amounts of growth. For example, leisure and recreation up 108% between Q1 and Q2, holidays up 141%, health and beauty 48%, eating and drinking 112%, and clothing and shoes up 73%. So Great to see such increases in spending in these areas which really suffered when the first lockdown hit. And we can see the return to customers in the leisure sector has really been reflected in the share price of Diageo, which is the biggest drinks company in the world. Here's the share price chart. As you can see, it really suffered back in March 2020, but it's almost recovered back to where it was before the first lockdown happened. Moving on to have a look at next week, it's very busy because it's corporate reporting season. And next week, we've got the biggest companies in the world reporting Amazon, Microsoft, Apple and Alphabet. That's it from us. Enjoy the weekend and we'll see you next Friday.